Hello, and welcome back to Colonial Airstream. I'm Patrick Botticelli. For 2020, Airstream announced the all new Caravelle line. It comes in four floor plans, a 16RB, a 19CB, a 20FB, and a 22FB. Today we're gonna to feature all new 2020 Caravelle 20FB. That's 20 foot eight inches from the center of the ball to the back bumper. It is nine foot seven from the ground to the top of the air conditioning. It is eight foot wide, and it gives you an interior width of seven foot seven inches. The floor to ceiling height is six foot seven and a half inches, and the gross vehicle weight rating is 5,000 pounds. The dry weight is 39.75, and a cargo carrying capacity is 1,025. The hitch weight's only 565 pounds. Base MSRP is 66,900, and there's three available options, a convection microwave, a solar charging system with 90 watt panel, and the window awning package will fill your roadside and rear window awnings. Let's head inside and check this trailer out. Caravel features two different interior color. And that would just be the fabric, uh, the cushion cover. This is Fusion by Ultra Fabrics and the bedspread pillow combination. Uh, right now we're in the pewter, which is uh, like a tannish. It's got a little gold metallic in it. And then there's a tungsten, which will be more of a black tone. It's a flat black. All the caravels will come with the autumn night laminate over plywood cabinets. You can see the corner here is solid oak stained. The caravel features some coat hooks by the entry door, a dry erase board with uh, magnets and a marker. And there's shoe storage here, a little boot tray that comes with it underneath this wardrobe. On this side, there's a pantry and a fire extinguisher below. And then up front, there is a 48 wide by 78 inch long bed. And the bed at the head and foot has little hampers that you can lift up to get a little additional storage. Generous size wardrobe with drawers. The whole underside of the bed is storage. It comes with all these bins here. And it's a pillow top memory foam mattress. You get an overhead roof locker over the bed, and there's uh, four speakers and a subwoofer inside. There's a privacy curtain that pulls across. Okay, and this will give you privacy in the bedroom. It's two piece, it's split because this part's shorter. And that just tucks back nice and neat. And then the dinette. So this trailer will sleep up to four people. So you could sleep two kids. You could even squeeze two adults on this because it's 40 by 76. And this plywood with laminate table has the soft edges to it, but this flips up, leg pushes in, drops down, and squeezes between the two benches. And then the back wrist on either side squeezes in the middle. And this is really good foam. This is really thick, very comfortable. I'll just hover my feet, but you can see I'm five foot nine and I could fit in here just fine. If I tuck in enough, there is room for someone else to sleep here as well. And it's very easy to put back. You just get the backrest in, it Velcros up against the wall. And then the table swings back up. There's an overhead roof locker over the dinette. And then in the back, we have the bathroom. There's a dry bath, so the shower and toilet are separate, and there's a vanity sink inside as well. A very spacious room. You could get out of the shower, you could towel down, get dressed in this, brush your teeth, shave, whatever you have to do in this one compartment. The most unique thing about this trailer, and why some people are really, really going to like it, is this large kitchen area. It's got a very deep stainless sink that's really wide. This is a single bowl high mount faucet with sprayer. You got rear window that opens all the way out. Three burner cooktop with ventilation. Plenty of storage in these overhead roof lockers. Optional convection microwave, standard regular microwave. And then the drawers. Look at these drawers. You get three drawers here. This flips down for storage. And you get a slide out pantry. All this space is left over. You got a porthole window here. And then it has the 4.3 cubic foot refrigerator by Novacool. 
that runs on 12 volt or electricity. And then a television that's on an articulating arm. So you gotta lock it and swing it around. And you can sleep either way in the bed. I have it set up where the head of the bed is on the curb side of the trailer, but you could flip it around and sleep on the opposite side if you wish. Now that I gave you an overview of the trailer, I'm gonna go in a little bit more detail on how some of the things work inside. Right at the entry door, there's an electronic battery disconnect. So whenever you come in to use the trailer, you wanna turn the batteries on. But before you ever plug into a campground to charge the trailer, you wanna turn the batteries on. So that would be use. Store will be to shut the battery system off. I just shut everything off in the trailer. When you turn it on to use, uh, you don't want to leave all the lights on and hit in store. You want to shut off every light individually. But when you come and hit use, that will allow the trailer to charge when you're plugged into electricity or into your tow vehicle. There's a LED step light we're going to see outside later. A LED light underneath the awning, which is dimmable. We'll see that outside. But your interior lights are dimmable just by putting your finger over this little hole here. And you can tap it on and off. And if you hold it again, it's going to brighten them all the way back up. The area here is this little magazine holder. You can put whatever you want in this compartment. Uh, the wardrobe is a very generous size here. It has a light inside. The rod here has notches built in so your clothes hangers don't slide back and forth. These are just a protection for the wiring that goes on opposite sides of the wall. Below. There's a drawer here. These are full extension wooden box drawers. And the really nice hardware is like a satin black hardware they use. This one comes all the way out. And in the bedroom, we have another series of lights here that are dimmable and um, you could uh, turn on and off. So you got two up top there. There's a smoke detector in the bedroom. And then on the wall right here in the corner, there's four USB charge ports. So you can have your smartphone or your tablet in this little storage compartment. You can see how big it is. You can fit a pillow in there. There's also electrical outlet at the head of the bed as well. And at the front here, we have blackout lining curtains that pull across on a rail. And the Velcro strips keep the four panels together. You have a directional LED reading light one of the two speakers that are in this cabinet the rest of the two speakers are in the ceiling and there's a subwoofer head hidden under the dinette the roof locker is very deep and it goes all the way back up to the front wall it's, it's, uh, has aluminum backing to it and also the front window uh, i'll show you later when we go outside how the rock art opens but this window opens all the way out so you got plenty of ventilation at the foot of the bed there's a hamper that you could store more things in. And then over here at the dinette, this flips down to gain access to storage. But if you lift up the cushion, let me just get this out of the way for a second. There's another access up top to get to the same storage if, if you wanted to grab it from the top. And then the water heater is a six gallon tank but it gives you nine gallons continuous flow of hot water by using a mixing valve. It preheats the water, then it superheats the water. And you could, you could get nine gallons continuous flow out of a faucet. But that has uh, gas and electric elements, so you could choose either or or both. And then down here on the floor, there's a low point drain and there's a, a bypass for the water heater. This is just a service access. So you don't want to store anything in this compartment here, but you can in here. And you can see that all the cushions are really, really nicely done at Airstream. They, they do a high quality cushion. And these little holes allow air to escape when you sit down. And then the Velcro strips just keep everything in place when you're towing. Under the dinette, there's a GFCI protected electrical outlet. This is vinyl floor that goes throughout. It's one continuous sheet, so it's not individual tiles. There's another storage compartment here that flips down, it has the same access lid up top. And then the wheel well occupies this portion of the dinette. Ocean Air roller shades on the side. You could hook it halfway under the handles if you wish. There's no brake, so you can't stop it here. To open any window, you just pull the two handles, twist and lift. 
and you want to lift evenly. You don't want to twist because that could shatter the glass. That's a middle setting. There's a high setting and a low setting. Just want to remember that you have a window on. If you're walking around the outside of the trailer and you don't look up, you could potentially smack your head. There's an LED spotlight over the table with two different elements you could turn on. There's an emergency exit. Operates the same as this window, except for handles are red, and there's a quick release for the screen, so you can pop that out. It's sacrificial, so it's one shot, but you can get out of the trailer in case that door is blocked. Above, we have the Blu-ray player. There's also JL audio system, a really high quality audio system that's Bluetooth as well. And then uh, if you wanted to have the stereo on at night, you could put this little cover on so the light doesn't illuminate out. And then the Blu-ray player has its own remote control that comes with it as well. On this side, I just stored, this trailer comes standard with a wireless backup camera. This is the monitor, you know, just for storage purposes, I have it up here in this compartment, that goes in your tow vehicle. So you plug this into a 12 volt port, hook this up to your windshield, Turn the camera on, turn your parking lights on in your vehicle, that will power the camera. You can see what's going on behind you when you're backing up, but also when you're driving. So you can leave this on and see the traffic behind you, see people changing lanes, you're really getting a good idea what is going on. And this is a really good place to store it, although it does come with its own little box. And the Blu-ray player is plugged into an electrical outlet, but this electrical outlet has a sticker on it that says inverter circuit. So this outlet and a few other outlets in the trailer will work off your battery system. This comes standard with a 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter system. And when you turn on the inverter, it takes your stored battery juice, inverts it into electricity up to 1000 watts max, and allows you to run small electronic devices. Now it's not meant for a hairdryer or toaster or a convection microwave, but it is for small laptops and televisions. Okay. Above here, we have a ducted air conditioning system. So it comes standard with a 13,500 BTU air conditioning with electric heat strip built into it. The heat strip is like a heating element, like in the back of a hairdryer, that will glow and the fan blows low air over it, and that will help take the chill out of the air. The trailer comes standard with an 18,000 BTU force head air propane furnace system that's ducted throughout the rest of the bottom of the trailer. This is just an auxiliary heat system. But the ductwork, you could spin around different directions. These are louvered. You could also shut a particular one off and dedicate more air to a different part of the trailer if you wish. Back here, we have a fantastic fan with a shade, and they give you the shade in the bedroom part. The fan screen here has a quick release so you can clean the blades periodically. It has a manual lid or a powered lid, so I could just hit open lid. Then once the lid opens, I can have the fan on or off. So if I have it off, it'll just be an event. I can have it on. There's three different speeds, one, two, or three. And it really pulls a great amount of air out of this trailer. So you have to make sure you have some other window open. Uh, you also have a thermostat built into it so we could find our room temperature. There it is. So if it gets warmer than it is right now, that fan will kick back on. Or I could put it just below a room temperature, so that way it gets cooler than what our current temperature is in the room. And then uh, it has a rain sensor that will shut the lid down and shut the fan off if a raindrop hits the sensor, and that will disable the fan and shut it off so you don't get water inside your trailer. When you're all done, you can just hit close lid, and it seals up nice and tight. There's another roof locker over here on this portion of the dinette. We have the comfort control center. This allows you to control anything uh, heat, air conditioning, or furnace related. So you just uh, put your mode down. So you got air conditioning mode. I got it set to 64. Now we're not plugged in, so the air conditioner will not come on, but I could set my temperature. I could change the fan from automatic which will come on and off as it calls for air conditioning, to low, medium, or high. And that will continuously run the fan, and the compressor will kick on and off as it calls for air conditioning. I could, uh, there's only one zone in this trailer, but larger trailers have multiple air conditionings. 
You could set a clock and a program. A program would just be like at home. You could set it for certain times. If I could change the mode now to auto. So now we'll use air conditioning or heat strip to get you to your desired temperature. I could also change that just to heat pump and the heat, uh, sorry, uh, heat strip, and that will run, uh, take the chill out of the air. If, if, it's, if it's colder than 40 degrees, you wanna run your furnace. And then I could turn the furnace on from here. And the furnace has uh, uh, one speed, but if you turn on the furnace and you want the air conditioning system to circulate air, you could change the fan speed from auto to low, medium, or high if you wish to have both running at the same time. And then you can change your temperature here. You can see your inside temperature and you can change from Fahrenheit to Celsius as well. And you can shut the whole panel off when you're done. The air conditioning has intake grates built in. There's filters on either side. You wanna check them before every trip to make sure they're not clogged. You clean them in the sink, let them dry, and then put them back up. Uh, if they're clogged, it will overwork the air conditioning. It could potentially harm it long term. Pantry here by the entry door is a generous depth. <clears throat> Fire extinguisher, you want to uh, replace that every five years or so. Some people could go a little bit longer. There's a bumper here at the entry door. So if you don't duck, you don't bump your head on the metal. The LG television has that articulating arm to swing all the way around, but it has a heavy duty bracket system. This is a nylon cord that releases it. Over here on the wall behind the TV, we have the HDMI port, which the TV hooks into, a coax cable, and then there's a black button here with a green light. That's an antenna booster. So if I wanted to do over-to-air television reception, high def, I could turn, push this button in, and that will turn the antenna on, uses 12 volt to do so, and that will boost the signal for the television to get you local stations. It's always a, uh, a good idea. Remember, when you're done using the TV, you could shut the antenna booster off so you don't drain your battery. But also, if you leave that on when you're hooked into campground's cable connection, it's going to distort their signal, and you'll have all squiggly lines through the screen. TV's plugged into an inverter circuit, and then above it, there's an electrical outlet tester Airstream gives you. I'm going to use that to demonstrate. You know, there's some lights here that light up, and there's a, a sequence. This is an electrical outlet tester. You could also test to see if the GFCI works. I'm going to use it for demonstration purposes to show that this outlet will be powered when I press the inverter switch here in the galley. Press that in, green light comes on, and within 30 seconds you'll have power going to the outlet. So you can see we have power going to that. If you leave the inverter on without anything plugged into any outlet, anything drawing, it will still draw down your battery, and it could potentially draw down your battery faster than the optional solar charging system can gain it. So you just want to be mindful to shut this off when you're done using the inverter. In the pantry, these shelves are removable. These are the storage compartments you saw early, but you can see you have premium hardware. This hard drawer is detachable and adjustable, so you can square it up either way over time. Battery charger. So this is the converter charger. This is a multi-stage battery converter charger. Houses all your electrical breakers. There's also a main GFCI protection reset in here, kind of like what you have in a bathroom in a house, but it's here on the panel for all those outlets that are in wet areas. This converts AC, alternating current, to DC, direct current, and then this will ha ha power your lights, your radio, your fans, your furnace, and there's automotive ATC style fuses in here, and each fuse is plugged in, and if one of those fuses was to fail, a red LED light would illuminate next to it. This also charges the battery, so the bottom portion is a battery charger, and under load, the charger will get hot, so there's a fan that kicks on in here to cool this compartment down. You want to make sure and be mindful that you don't put anything in front of this to restrict airflow. That will overwork your converter and cause it to uh, fail prematurely. This is a propane leak detector. This detects the air quality inside the trailer. If you spray anything aerosol by, it will also set it off, but this is... Uh, uh, sensing the air quality if you had a propane leak. Also, um, you want to keep this clear. You don't want to put anything really close up against that. In the 4.3 cubic foot Novacool refrigerator, there's a lock here on the side to prevent the door popping open when you're driving. There's also a lock when you're parked. If you're not completely level, keep the door from wobbling open. 
There's plenty of room here on the door. The top portion is the freezer. It comes with an ice cube tray. And then there's a dial here that you can turn the refrigerator on and off. And you can change your temperature. And uh, the big advantage of a compressor stall refrigerator, besides it runs on 12 volt or electricity, 12 volt when you're driving, electricity when you're plugged in, is that they're very deep. An absorption style propane refrigerator is very shallow. So the door might be bigger and taller and look larger, but there's really not a lot of depth. So this is a, a pretty big advantage, a nice upgrade for 2020. And then this bottom portion pulls all the way out. And when you turn on the refrigerator, it takes about six hours to remove the heat. So you want to uh, think about it before you leave on your trip. It's, it's always a, uh, a good suggestion to turn the refrigerator on to get it cool before you put your items inside. Behind the pantry, you got a bank of three drawers. Comes with a silverware organizer. And these go all the way out. Airstream, they really are, they, they do a great job. They really utilize every inch of storage inside their trailers. This has the optional convection microwave, which is an upgrade over the standard regular microwave it comes with. But a uh, convection microwave has an electric element built into it that glows cherry red. And there's a fan in the back that circulates hot air over your food so you could brown and bake. Below this is the furnace intake. And this is an access panel strictly for a service technician to get in if they need to. Uh, but Airstream does a great job allowing for service access. Uh, some other manufacturers might not spend the extra money to do this, so you have to take apart multiple items to get in for service. Cooktop, the three burner cooktop. These grates are removable so you can clean over time. And uh, what you want to do is you put it to the little spark, press in. We got that one going, same thing here. You could bring it all the way down the low and one here on the side. This is a good area too. You can see that I had a lot of air to escape. Once you turn on your propane tanks for the first time, uh, there's items that will try multiple times to ignite and then shut off. You can get all that air out of the system just by turning on your cooktop and letting it bleed that air. Make sure you use your cooktop ventilation system. When we go outside later, I'm going to show you how to open that up. There's an LED light over this area as well. A filter to check periodically. You have a spotlight over this area. It really illuminates this area. It gets this bright. Another ocean air roller shade. And then over here, we turned on the inverter before by pressing this button. But because this has the optional solar charging system, it comes with the Sun Explorer 2 display by Atkinson Electronics. And you could check your battery voltage. You could also check your solar voltage, solar charge amps, solar amp hours, and your charging status. Even though it's gloomy out today, we are taking on some solar gain. Another electrical outlet that's GFCI protected. We could check our, this is the standard C level two tank monitoring system. It's a probeless system, but we could check our battery voltage, our fresh water, we're at 0%. This is really nice because most RVs give you thirds or quarters, so you don't know precisely how much you have in each tank. This will give you a percentage from uh, zero all the way up to 100. And you could check your 28 gallon gray waste tank and your 18 gallon black waste tank. And a fresh water tank is 27 gallons. You could also turn on your water pump from here. So once you fill your 27 gallon fresh water tank or put some water in it, you could turn on the pump and the pump will kick on and that, what will do is pressurize the water system in the trailer, and then it will shut off. And then once it feels a drop in pressure, when you turn on the faucet, the pump will kick back on. And then you shut the faucet off, and the pump will shut off. You want to make sure that you do not leave your water pump switch on when you're towing, because just in case a faucet was to kick on, you would flood out your trailer. Uh, and you don't want to leave your water pump on if there's no water in the fresh water tank, because it will run continuously, and it will burn itself out in a very quick manner. The sink is a very thick gauge stainless steel. There's an ocean air roller shade behind here that hooks in and this rear window opens all the way out. And snap it into the highest setting there. And uh, it's a qu high quality Moen faucet with a satin black finish. Below the sink there's a waste pail. It's even routed out, so it keeps it in place when you're towing. 
and you can see the edge grain of the plywood. So this is a good area if you have if you're questionable whether or not it's particle board or plywood. If you look inside, you can see the edge grain of the plywood. It's a more stable and more resilient material to build cabinetry with in an RV over particle board or melamine. This is a laminate wall here, so there's room that you could put uh, items here, maybe a picture or a mirror if you decided to. And in the bathroom, this is a flush mount instead of a handle so you don't catch your belt loop in it. You just slide that over and that will open the door. You can see we have another fantastic fan. It operates the same way as the one in the bedroom, but it doesn't have the shade. You can get that through parts aftermarket. The bathroom has its own fan that pushes straight up. Push the button and I'll exhaust steam and stale air out. But they also have this cutout in the door, so if you want a higher volume out, if you're taking a really hot shower, you could use this fan to really steam this compartment. There's an air, air conditioning duct in here. There's a ceiling light switch, and if it's too bright, you could turn one element off if you want. The sink here is another stainless steel sink with another Mullen faucet, another GFCI protected electrical outlet. And then the water heater, which is gas and electric, you could turn the gas element on from here. Or you could turn the electric element on from here. And if on gas, if it misfired, if the tank tried to ignite multiple times and it couldn't, this red LED light would illuminate. And that will only illuminate if there's a problem igniting on propane. Uh, so a lot of people confuse that with uh, the red light should be on when the water heater is on. It's only if there's a problem. And to turn on either gas or electric, the switch goes up. It's in the up position, will be on. There's a hook here on the wall for a, a wash towel. Plenty of counter space here off to the side. This opens up, and you can put your toilet paper on the roll here. Colonial Airstream gives you some toilet paper and some drop in tank deodorizers to start with, 16 doses. So, what you do is after you're ready to use the trailer, you flush one of those down to the tank. And that will treat up to 18 gallons of waste. When you discharge the waste out of the tank, you could retreat the next load with another drop in. There's a porcelain toilet. It has a ball valve in it, so you could put your foot partially on the pedal, and that will turn on the water to raise the bowl to your desired height. When you're ready to flush, you just push all the way down, and that will activate your water pump or allow water from city water to give you a flush. And then um, it's always a good idea, before you tow the trailer, drain the bowl down. You don't want water splashing around all over the walls of your trailer. And then there's an ocean air roller shade behind the toilet for privacy. There's a medicine cabinet here on the wall with adjustable shelves. And then the roll-away shower curtain, which we've had great success with over the years, has a squeegee built into it. It's mold and mildew resistant, so once you pull the shower curtain across and hook it in, when you roll it back, all that water rolls down the drain. Instead of having a door that swings out that could drip onto your floor, uh, this is a very efficient, efficient use of space in this compartment. The shower wand hangs in the wall. Once you turn on the diverter, this is a high quality uh, shower diverter, to your desired temperature, you could uh, start uh, rinsing. And then once you are ready to lather up, you could pause and it will keep your setting of your temperature, and then you could rinse back off by turning it back on. Over here on the wall, there's a clothesline that pulls across and hooks in. You could hang a bait and suit from here, any light items, no, no towels, and then you can lock it in. And when you're done, you undo the screw, and it'll roll back in. This is all fiberglass the enclosure. It's got a three inch overlap here. They caulk the seam. You just want to periodically check your seams, just like you would at home, at your home shower. Just make sure none of the seams opened up. And there's a ledge here that you could sit on in this compartment. I'm five foot nine, so this is uh, plenty of headroom for me in here, and plenty of elbow room in this compartment. If you look in the back of the door, they give you a towel rack that you could hang your towels from. So let's uh, wrap it up inside, and we're going to head outside, because I want to show you where everything is located and how it all works, and some useful tips. It's a beautiful entry door. Screen door is all TIG welded in place. It's aluminum. You get the screen door guards. It's got a heavy gasket here, so when you detach the screen from the main door, it snaps in nice and tight. 
and then this fills the gap here. If you look at the heavy duty extruded aluminum door frame, you got TIG welding here on the bottom, grip tape so on the way out you don't slip. And this just pops right back and snaps on to the entry door, which is aluminum clad. And that trailer has equal bad insulation going all the way around. And they also insulate the entry door. Heavy duty lock assembly, heavy duty deadbolt assembly, heavy gasket here as well. And it shuts like a vault. Check out these hinges here, they're beautiful. Airstream does a great job. Extruded aluminum gutter rail over the entry door so allow the rain to go around the door polished aluminum grab handle and check this out when the door comes around it clips right in so the wind doesn't catch it at the floor here you got a tongue groove plywood floor with an uh, outdoor exposure rating there's a uh, aluminum uh, track here that allows you to sweep the trailer out very easily and check out this toolie step just push it in it's away Pull it out, you can do it with your foot, in and out. There's a step light here by the entry door. You see here we have the bottom rub rail protection, center belt line protection. Behind the door, you can see our uh, rim and tire combination. This is a, has a black powder coating on the interior, but they're a Goodyear Endurance tires, 225, 75, R15. These are load range E. 80 PSI, 80 mile an hour speed rating. You want to check your lug nut torque every uh, 10, 25, and 50 miles after you remove the tire for any maintenance. Uh, even though this has a never lube hub assembly and never adjust braking system, you want to periodically inspect your brake linings, inspect the bearings. There's a shock absorber on each wheel. This is a one axle trailer. And it's a rubber torsion axle system with very li little moving parts so you don't have to worry about wear and tear in a quick manner of time. Outside GFCI protected electrical outlet. This will only work when the trailer is plugged into shore power. The 18,000 BTU furnace has an exhaust here. Now this will get hot, so if the kids are playing around, it's just caution them. Also, you don't want to park next to combustibles. Beautiful Caravel medallion underneath the trailer. We have flex foil insulation underneath uh, the plywood floor. And the plywood floor has a marine anti-wicking substance painted to the whole perimeter. And what that does is if you left your entry door open and you got a little bit of rainwater on top of the laminate and it rolled underneath, it wouldn't wick it through the whole entire floor. And then the whole underbelly is wrapped up in aluminum. And the tanks are below the floor in this model and they're insulated and heated. Uh, so it uh, gives you a higher threshold protection if you're doing some cold weather camping. There's stabilizer jacks, all four corners. We're going to pull them down when we go to the other side. Right here, we have your cooktop ventilation. There's latches that you push out of your way to allow this louver to open when you turn on the fan. It's best practice to close them when you're towing or close it when it's storage so bugs can't get in or it doesn't flap around. LED running lights all the way around. It's recommended to turn your parking lights on whenever you're towing the trailer. Parking lights will power the backup camera. Now we saw the monitor inside, but this is the camera uh, above the, the rear Airstream logo up top there. Double stacked LED taillights, polished aluminum, rear bumper, rear bumper storage. This lifts up, you could stick blocks of wood, wheel chocks, anything that has ground contact that gets dirty, you could throw it out here. Now this is not a weatherproof compartment, this one is, this is your rear insulated weather seal lockable storage trunk and it has low point drains here for winterization. There's a light back here to illuminate this area at night. Airstream includes the winterization siphon tube as well. And there's plenty of storage that goes all the way around. Licensed plate bracket with light. Rear window awning is part of the window awning package. It's a $1,350 upgrade we highly recommend it look at the beautiful sunbrella material this just pulls down and rolls up it's metal wrapped to protect it when it's in easily comes back down this back window opens all the way out there's three different height adjustments it's tinted and it's uh, safety glass it's tempered glass 
There's a little Velcro here to, when you roll that up, to keep it up in place. The freshwater tank has a lockable compartment. It's 27 gallons. Just take the cap off, stick your uh, potable water hose loosely in here, turn the water on low, allow the air to escape out of the tank. There's a drain valve under the trailer. We'll see that when we get to the other side. You want to wash and wax the Airstream at least twice a year. Keep it away from road salt, get the bugs off the front when you're done towing, and uh, make sure you power wash the underbelly as well periodically. You don't want any mud splash up or road salt on there as well. The stabilizer jacks come with this tool, and this is a multi-tool, but uh, the 19 millimeter fits on. And we could crank down these jacks, and what that does, it doesn't level the trailer. You're gonna use your electric hitch jack up front to level the trailer. Side to side, you could use leveling blocks. This is just to take that bounce out of your walk when you're walking around inside. So uh, you don't want to crank these up. Even though they're heavy duty, it's just to take that bounce out of your walk. And they're all four corners of the trailer. This trailer comes with a full-size spare tire, and there's specific jacking locations. So there's a metal plate riveted to the frame with a sticker that says jack. There's one here, and there's one on the other side. You want to disconnect from your tow vehicle, put your electric hitch jack down on the ground, and then put your bottle jack from your tow vehicle on either side, and that will pump up this side of the trailer. And then the tools, you could use the tools from your truck if they fit, or you can buy a separate kit, and it's best to have a torque wrench with you as well. This is your cable inlet. You want to bring a cable, or maybe the campground has one for you, to go from their cable service into your trailer. They might have a little box they give you for, uh, that you'd plug in behind the television. You could also hook a portable satellite dish in here, position that, bring your receiver, and uh, you could have sa uh, satellite television while you're on the road. Over here, we have your city water inlet. You could take this cap off and come on the other stream, gives you a 25 foot fresh water hose. You hook this in, you hook this into the campground's water connection, and this will supply water to all your plumbing on board. It's not gonna fill that fresh water tank. Uh, it's just going to supply water when you need it. And you're going to run off of their water pressure. And this has a water pressure regulator built into it, too. You could also run an inline water filtration system so you can filter all the water before it comes in the trailer. Down on the ground here, let me grab the waste hose out of the waste hose storage tube first. Let's take the cap off. This fits up to a 25 foot hose. Colonial gives you 10 foot, so you could always buy the extension. Your waste tanks, you have a gray tank and a black tank. Black is toilet waste, gray is sink and shower waste. What you can do is, you can, there's a light here to illuminate this area at night if you need it. You take the cap off, best practice to wear rubber gloves or vinyl gloves. Take the cap off, make it some residual drip. Snap on your waste hose. Make sure it's nice and tight, you don't want that flying off. And then the campground's gonna have somewhere close, and you know, this stretches out quite a bit and you can get it where you need to go, but somewhere close we'll have a, a waste dump station or right at your site, and you can screw this in, or you can use the donut and slip it in and get a nice secure connection. Then you can snap your hose right into it. And then what you do is you'd always empty your black tank first. That's toilet waste, it has some solids in it. You pull this straight out, the waste will discharge through the tube, and once you don't see any waste coming through anymore, you can close the black tank and you can follow up with your gray waste, which is this soapy water and sink water that will go through and wa wash out your waste hose, get all those salads out of it. And then when you're all done, you can just leave them closed. It's best practice to leave them closed and open them periodically when you see the gauges say they're at a certain level when you decide to empty them. Take it one step further. Airstream builds in a black tank flush. Don't use that hose, use a separate garden hose. After you empty the black tank, leave it open. Hook up a garden hose up to this fitting. Inside the tank, there's a wand. Under pressure, that'll spray the walls of the tank down and get all that residual waste out. Really good idea to do this when you're done camping before you put the trailer away in storage. That way you don't have any tank odor over time. And very important not to forget, when you hook up to this, the black tank valve has to be fully open. Otherwise, the tank will fill up and flood out your trailer. Okay. In a little bit further, behind this, there is a drain valve for the freshwater tank. 
You just twist a little lever, it's a white handle, and that will drain down, gravity drain down your fresh water tank. You want to drain it down after you're done using the trailer, because water over time will start to smell, and it's always best practice to get all that out as well. The power cord. 25 foot, 30 amp power cord. You go to a campground, you hook up to their 30 amp. You can run air conditioning, the microwave, your television, you can charge the batteries, you can run the refrigerator. Not everything at one time, but you can run most of those items. At home, or if you go to a campground that only has a 15 amp connection, we give you this heavy duty adapter. Now, this is better than those small block adapters because there's less resistance and less prone to melting. So we, we get you the better one. And then you plug your power cord into it. And then you plug this into a regular outlet. And then you can run everything in your trailer except for your air conditioning. There's just too much amperage to go through a 15 amp outlet. So uh, this will be good for charging, running the refrigerator, microwave. And this is detachable. You just undo the collar here, twist and pull. And when you look at the end of the power cord, there's an LED light, a red light. And that will indicate that you have power coming in. Sometimes uh, the breaker trips at the campground, you might not know that, and uh, you don't have power coming in. If you don't see this lit, you know that there's a challenge going on. Above, we have an outside utility shower. It's lockable. Take the shower wand out. You can hang it up here. You've got hot and cold water. You can hose down all your equipment if it gets muddy and dirty before you put it away in storage. And don't forget that you got to winterize this portion as well and get all the water out of it. Another piece of the window awning package is this full side. It goes cap to cap. Window awning covers your windows, your porthole windows, and shades the trailer. Makes the trailer run a little bit more efficient, especially if you're in direct sunlight. This rolls up, metal wrapped, and it's lockable. There's an awning tool that comes with the trailer. You can do it by hand. Moving forward, let me just close this waste hose storage tube there. Make sure that's closed. We can open up the water heater access. Now this is just for service access. All the controls, we saw those inside earlier. But what happens is when you turn on the water heater on the gas part of it, this gas valve opens mixed with the combustible air, ignites and the excess heat and exhaust comes out the top. There's a pressure relief valve. If the pressure in the tank ever got too high, that would relief out of here. And there's a drain plug down here on the bottom for long-term storage or for winterization. Don't ever store anything in here. And you want to wipe it down periodically to keep it clean. This here is your VIN plate and tire information, tire pressure, very important to reference back to here. Before you ever hook up to the trailer, check lug nut torque and tire pressure. I always say it, I say it again and again, very important to do. This is another stabilizer jack location. This has the stainless steel wrap protectors on it, and this comes Caravel series and up. They're available on the Bambi series as an aftermarket upgrade. It's about $1,600 or so dollars to do as an upgrade. And what this is, this is aluminum body. This is Alcoa aluminum. This is a stretch form panel here where they take a flat sheet of aluminum, stretch it over a form. This protects that stretch form panel from rocks and debris that are gonna hit the road because this is stainless steel. It's a little bit thicker, it's heavier, it's more resilient. And they gap it from the body to allow some deflection. So if you hit debris in the road, there's a space here so it doesn't dent the body behind. And there's a piano hinge here on the side and three nuts you could take off so you could swing these out so you could clean behind here too. You wanna to clean and wax behind here as well. There's one on each side. Above that, we have the solar stone guards. This protects your tempered safety glass, that big curved glass up front from shattering when you hit rocks and debris. The front window opens all the way out, but we have to open these tethers first. And then once we get it open, I could spin the neural knob on either side, both sides, and then I could open my window three different heights. These corners here, since it's gapped from the body, you could get some leaves and debris and maybe uh, the window will get dirty from uh, over time. You can take a Phillips head screwdriver, turn a quarter turn. Now this comes out and lifts off a slip hinge, put it on the ground, then clean your glass. You don't want to overextend it. And if these are unbuckled, you don't want to leave them unbuckled long because the wind could catch them and, and uh, bend the body behind it. 
It's also very important to walk around your trailer before you leave the campground. There's an Airstream Care app that you could download. There's a checklist in there. There's a checklist in your owner's manual of all the things that you want to do before you leave the campground and you start towing uh, to prevent any uh, challenges. Uh, one of them would be to put these tethers on to prevent the rock art from flipping up into the body. Come standard with an electric hitch jack. You can extend or retract. That's up and down. That would come up and down off your tow vehicle. This has a bubble level up top, which will get you close. You know if you're close to level. It has an LED light to illuminate your hitching area at night. And it comes with a manual override. Just in case you had battery failure, you could slip this on and you can manually crank the trailer up and down by hand. This has a 12 volt DC trailer breakaway switch. Now this will get attached securely to your tow vehicle. And just in case when you're towing, these two things, the trailer and your tow vehicle separated, this would pull out. And what that does is it sends power to your rear brakes off your battery system in the trailer to uh, slow the trailer down so it doesn't pass you in the shoulder. You don't want to leave this out or pull this out and leave it out because it will rapidly drain your batteries and it will burn the magnets out over time. This is just for emergency purposes, but you do want to inspect the cable from time to time to make sure it's not frayed. Trailer runs on a seven-way wiring harness. It's six spades and one pin. This will plug into a vehicle that has a properly equipped seven-way. It's always recommended that that vehicle, tow vehicle, has a 12-volt charge lead hooked up. Not all seven-ways have 12-volt charge lead, but it's the best idea to make sure your vehicle has one. You're also going to be required to have an electric brake controller installed in your vehicle. Whether it comes from the factory, you do an aftermarket, wireless, there's all different types on the market, but you have to have one. And that will control the 12-inch electric drum brakes that's on the trailer. This has 11,000-pound safety chains that you want to crisscross and hook up securely to your tow vehicle. And this has the new Demco Easy Latch. This is a composite latch instead of metal to metal, so when it rubs on the frame, it doesn't wear the paint off. You have a 2 and 5 16 inch ball, and it's highly recommended to have some type of weight distribution hitch system if your tow vehicle is compatible with it. And uh, on this trailer, you can use anywhere from 600 to 1,000 pound bars, and I would let the service technician use his discretion or their discretion. And uh, the frame is black paint. This is hand painted at Airstream. You could touch it up with gloss black paint. And this is a boxed frame, so it's not a C-channel frame. It's fully boxed all the way around, so it's more secure and more rigid. Propane bottle cover houses two 20-pound propane tanks. Larger tanks could potentially fit in there if you modified the cover, but Airstream spec'd out 20 pound for balance on the trailer, so you could balance out the tongue weight in the trailer, but also because these are easily exchanged. Now I could get this cover off by undoing this uh, threaded nut here. I lift the cover off. Now it's pretty breezy out, so you gotta really think about it. You don't want it to fly across the parking lot or the campground, so we're gonna keep that secure. These tanks are hooked up. Right now I have the propane system on, as we saw inside for the cooktop. But you have a regulator that points to this bottle, or you could manually switch it to this bottle. If you leave both bottles on and this bottle was to empty, it would automatically internally switch to this bottle, run from this bottle. Whatever one you started with, whatever this is pointed to, this would indicate red to let you know that this bottle is empty. And these are the same size that your barbecue might use at home, so they're exchangeable. If you want to keep these bottles, you could always find a place to get them filled, but it's more convenient when you're stopping to get fuel at a gas station to swap out the tank and use the next tank, and the next time you'll have a different tank, and so on. Make sure this bottle cover is secure when you're towing. You don't want your propane tanks to wobble around or come loose when you're driving. It's always best practice, too, to make sure your propane tanks are physically off, turned off, before you're towing for safety. Behind the propane tanks, there's a battery box here. Inside the battery box, you have two 12-volt Group 24 Series batteries. Standard Airstream gives you lead-acid interstate batteries. This has a solar charging system, and these batteries are upgraded to absorb glass mat. These batteries are maintenance free. They are 80 amp hours a piece. They're in parallel. And there's, there's 
really nothing you have to do to check the terminals periodically, but I do highly recommend getting the solar charging system as a factory option because that's recognized under Airstream's nationwide warranty service uh, plan. And this is lockable because Colonial Airstream provides this lock and we provide the cup holder lock for all our customers. The batteries are expensive, so sometimes they uh, are attractive for thieves to take, so it's always a good, or, good idea to make sure that you lock them in place. Now standard, this trailer comes with the ZAMP uh, port here. So we have the solar charging system. You still get the ZAMP port, but you could buy their panel and plug it right in. And the panel would have its own controller built in. So it would charge the batteries as needed. When you get the solar charging system, you still get the port, but when you plug anything into here, it shuts the onboard system down so you can utilize this instead. Spare tire, we spoke about earlier. What you want to do is just remove this pin here on the side. Sometimes it's a little tight to get to. Take that out, slide this one across. And then the spare tire just drops right down. It cradles right in this cage here. And to get easier access to it, you can raise your electric hitch jack up to gain you better access. And it's a steel wheel. And you also don't want to forget to check your tire pressure in your spare tire before you go on a trip as well, because these will naturally lose air over time. And so bring the tire up, just lift up the arm, slide this pin across, get that locked in, and snap the pin in place. Around on this side, you can see your amber front running lights. Step back and take a look at the roof line. We have a radio antenna up front. There's a 14 by 14 fantastic fan in the bedroom area. Your air conditioning. Between the awning and the, and the air conditioning is the 90 watt solar panel. There's a fantastic fan in the galley. There's a bathroom fan. And there's gray and black tank vents up top there, as well as the aerial antenna. The standard Zip D awning comes with a tool. You spin uh, these little knobs here on the end. And once you get them loose, you push in the outer arm and this will drop down. There's a travel lock here in the middle. You just twist. We're gonna undo this wheel lock here as well. It's loose enough now. I can push out on the outer arm and that will drop right down in place. Now it's quite breezy out today. You really have to use your discretion before you pull out the one. You want to check the weather and check the wind. It's a little too breezy to have it out for a long period of time, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to put it out today. Make sure your entry door is shut and that anybody inside the trailer knows you're operating the awning and wait to exit the trailer. You're going to pull on this strap. It's all Sunbrella. It's spring loaded. This awning wants to go back in. Well, I'm going to make sure I have a good grip on it Pull it down until I can see this visor. I'm going to walk it holding the visor. <clears throat> and in here, there's a rafter arm that sits on a little perch. Okay, when the awning goes up, this spring keeps this tight so it doesn't come off. And it has to snap on right onto the end of the roller wheel. And then what we're going to do is lock it in place. There's a spring and there's a pin. When we pull down, that pin locks into little notches here and prevents the awning from rolling back up. Now it's secure. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, just in a much quicker manner. It's really op easy to operate this awning. Now, we want to lift the awning up. There's four holes in here. There's a square tube inside of a hollow square tube. The best idea is to go inside the awning, put your hand on the roller wheel, release this neural knob, and lift up. If you pull too hard on this, you're going to twist the two square tubes and it acts as a brake. And there, no matter what you do, you can't push the awning up. So just keep it straight and it glides really easy. We get to the fourth hole, make sure it locks in. Same thing on the front. Now this one is pretty important. You got to keep it up at the high setting, one, two, three, four, by the door so the door doesn't rub on the awning when you lift it up. Now once you have it all up, you could roll this piece up here and tuck it into the little pouch. And then if you're looking at the body, I'm gonna turn on the LED light strip underneath the awning and that's dimmable. 
and that illuminates this whole awning area at night. And it really gives you a, a good amount of light source without a gla uh, big glow. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video of the all new 2020 Caravel 20FB. This Airstream is available at Colonial Airstream. Our website is colonialairstream.com. Telephone number is 800-265-9019. You can find me on Facebook, I'm Colonial Patrick. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.